When I was first learning how to code, I made some mistakes. So I want to go over the five mistakes that I made when I was learning how to code so you don't make those same mistakes. These are in no particular order. And do keep in mind that uh, they may overlap with one another. So um, as we're going along here, one might have to do with the other. It's fine. They all work together and we're gonna get through all of them. Hey everyone. My name is Tiffany, welcome back to my channel. I create things that live online and this is one of them. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe and we'll get started. Number one is you're not looking at job descriptions as you are learning how to code. Okay, this is one where I think it's important because you need to know what is out there while you're learning how to code. Go look at the job title that you would like to have Go look at various sized companies. Go look at what skills that they are requiring for this person, what location they are in, what kind of industry they're in, so that you can gather all that information, data, so that you can um, figure out um, what you should be earning salary-wise based on the location that you're in, and also what skills you need in order to um, get that position that you really want. You don't really know what's out there until you really start looking. Can you find a job with just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? There are plenty of positions out there, I'm sure, but what do they look like? What companies are hiring for these roles? So it's very much gonna be in your favor to get acquainted with all those things before you start going and applying. So the sooner you do that, the better off you are so that you can position yourself to be in the right position that you want in the end. The second thing that you might find yourself doing is being in a tutorial rut. I'm pretty sure you may have heard of this. If not, let me tell you what that is. It's when you go learn a new framework or a new language and you just start looking for um, tutorials based on those, those languages or frameworks that you're trying to study. And you just do the tutorials and then you're like, okay, I have a good idea of it. Let me move on to the next tutorial and the next tutorial and the next tutorial and the next tutorial. And it just becomes an endless loop of tutorials and you're not really creating anything for yourself. So this is the tutorial rut. You don't want to do that because you are then just in various tutorials <laughs> and tutorials only teach you so much. They teach you the basics, they do their job and they introduce you to a concept and then that's it. So after you have been introduced to that concept, you may take notes on it, but then after that, you may forget it. You may not use it again. Um, you, you just kind of lose what you have learned because you're not putting it to practice. So I recommend that you put these things into practice by basically creating your own projects. And these can be very small projects. They can be like building a website for your, you know, your first thing. If you're talking about HTML and CSS, what problem can you solve that you're having? make that into a project. So I recommend just coming up with a list of ideas as you are looking at tutorials and stuff like that. And I think in the beginning, it might be a little bit more difficult, but I, th I promise you it gets easier if you aren't already coming up with lots of ideas of things that you want to create. And I recommend starting small. So like a website, building a website is probably the easiest thing. And then maybe you want to add different types of things to your website, then that's when you go and you start learning how to do those extra things. And that, my friend, is how you're going to put everything into practice and be able to learn things and really tune up those, those skills that you have. And honestly, that is going to put you on a really good path of learning and understanding and grasping the concepts. The third mistake, you're not networking. Oh, I hate to be the one to tell you this but you have to network guys. I know it's tough. We're in a pandemic for crying out loud, but it's important to get out there and talk with other developers and see what they're working on and put yourself in that environment. So you can go on social media to do this. You can go on Twitter. There are several hashtags. I've done a video on 
online coding communities before, check that out. Um, in addition to those, you can also go online and look for specific language that you're learning. Most of the times it's JavaScript. Um, you can look at the hashtag JavaScript, see what people are talking about there, follow some accounts that seem to be having useful information for yourself. And then those accounts usually are tied to real people. So if they're doing something cool, tell them they're doing something cool, like interact with those people. And that's how you can network online. I know it's difficult right now, guys, but um, Twitter is a really good space to network with other tech professionals. Also Instagram, I know, right? Lots of photos. If you aren't looking up tech people on Instagram and you want to, I recommend uh, looking up hashtags. This is also for Twitter, LinkedIn. You could look up hashtags. You could follow accounts there. You could follow hashtags on LinkedIn. So, I mean, it's a really, it can work across all platforms. You can go to TikTok and do the same thing, guys. So um, there are so many places in social media that you can follow people and then also interact with those people. Since we are in a very interesting place right now where most of us are working at home, you'll see people are able to interact with you a little bit more than what they normally would if they were in an office setting. So even if you like reply to something, maybe you don't get feedback right away, don't get discouraged. Just, you know, keep reaching out to different people. If you do find something interesting, start a dialogue, start talking to people because that's how you're going to like really get out there. Um, in addition, I would say be present and um, be ready to talk with other participants. Like I said, be ready to ask questions. So I know it's intimidating at first and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know, like what should I be asking? Or if you don't feel confident enough to do it um, in an open platform, like I said, that's when it helps to, on Zoom, you could send somebody a direct message to one person. Um, I don't know how it is on like, other conference platforms. Every one of those is different, to be honest. However, there should be a way that you can connect with one person and then maybe they can connect you with another person that's the speaker or something like that. So definitely um, start making those connections now so that when you're ready to find jobs and stuff, it's a little bit easier if you've already um, been talking to people and out there and networking and putting yourself out there. So the fourth thing is a lack of focus. This one is particularly when learning languages and different concepts. I find that people just are just like, okay, I got to learn web development. Okay. Where do I go? Oh, here's a resource. Here's a resource. Here's a resource. Here's a resource. And then you're just like, oh my gosh, this is too much. And then you might get discouraged. So I don't recommend doing that. I recommend settling on a path. If you've never coded before, if you have no idea where to start, I recommend just starting with front end web development, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then start digging into frameworks. And then you can go further from there. And by that point, you'll kind of know where to look. I recommend that you just start with um, one thing, one way to learn. How have you learned things in the past? And then kind of go with that concept. If it was primarily through books, pick up a book. You could download some books online um, and that will help as well. And then if, if that doesn't work for you, if you're not grasping it like that, go through video tutorials. If you don't learn by that way, maybe try looking at blog posts. Um, and then if that doesn't work for you, then maybe you try like a combination of all those resources mixed together. Maybe you learn best by doing, maybe you need an IDE or a text editor open as you're learning. And so you could follow along, just figure out which way that is. And that might take a little bit longer for you to really grasp onto, to be honest, but it's important to try, um, various resources in the beginning and then cut down those resources to the ones that are working for you. And then after you figured out what works for you, stick to those kinds of resources as you move forward in your learning process. And then that way, hopefully you'll gain a lot more understanding. You'll grasp a lot more concepts. The fifth mistake, this is kind of related to the networking piece that I mentioned earlier, but you're doing it on your own. 
stop doing this by yourself. I don't recommend it. <laughs> it's not fun. Um, and it doesn't mean that you need to be in a room with somebody coding, like a Zoom room with somebody coding every single day. That may not be the case. All I'm saying is you don't need to be going at this alone. I definitely recommend sharing your resources, talking with a community. Again, I mentioned getting involved in community. This is when you start talking to that community, sharing with that community, and getting involved with that community as well. So don't just be a watcher of in the community, actually participate and be a part of it so that you're not doing all this alone. Another recommendation along with not doing it on your own is I recommend sharing your progress. So along with actually going through all these tutorials and your own projects, share what you're learning with other people. So like I mentioned, there are hashtags on pretty much every platform. So if you could share a photo or maybe just type out what you've learned or maybe you start a blog and you kind of share your blog post out, something that is out there for yourself to hold yourself accountable, but also it puts you a part of the conversation that is happening within that community when you start adding hashtags to your posts and all those sorts of things. So keep that in mind as you are learning. The last thing you want to do is learn on your own because um, what you'll find is uh, when you are putting yourself in community and you're uh, sharing your knowledge and your growth, people react to that a lot. And so uh, you'll then gain uh, people that are on your side and they're going to be cheering for you. So you want that. So you're not doing this by yourself. So that's, that's all I have for you. If you have any questions or if you need further assistance, uh, please drop your comments in the comment below or um, connect with me on social media and I'll be happy to help. Uh, I do thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.